front yard. <coughs> it's right here in the yard this morning. <coughs> Eating on acorns. <coughs> oh, I'll probably cough for a couple more years still here, guys. It's 4.30 in the morning. <laughs> Gucci and I aren't going to show you much of our afternoon hunt yesterday after we spooked that big buck because it was pretty much a bust. We walked for several miles and didn't really get into anything good other than just wore ourselves out pretty much. So we came home. Those does just bedded right back down there, Gucci. Yeah, yeah just right there again. Just right here in the yard. I know. And we're driving an hour and whatever and then walking a couple miles to go deer hunting. You bet. <laughs> right here in the yard. Anyway, we're going back in where we boogered that buck yesterday. Um, he wasn't spooked very bad at all. After we spooked him, we found even more buck sign deeper into that area. So we're gonna come in a different way on this hunt. Hopefully be able to slide in there pretty quiet. There's this lake bed that runs up below this ridge that I think some of these bucks are bedded on. And we can take that edge of that lake bed up there and be really, really quiet in the dark this morning without going up into that oak timber that we were in yesterday. That's that's kind of the, the deal is that I, I don't want to walk down through all those woods yesterday where we scouted because that's probably where those bucks are going to be at right now as they're working back into their bedding. We got good wind cover this morning. Cold front's pushing through right now. It's like 45 out. Last night when we left the woods, it was 70. So <coughs> hopefully going to be a good hunt this morning. We'll see. We're just going to head on down the road and get right in there amongst them. Amongst them. You're a good man, Gooch. Mm. And you're half awake. big tracks along the edge of this lake. All right, we made it up here. It's about six o'clock. We actually ran into a huge buck on the walk-in. We were walking the edge of that water down there. It's real, real quiet and the wind was perfect right in our face. And I was following that path around the edge and I glanced up ahead of me and in my light, I could see the buck walking down to the water to get a drink. So we killed the light and we just stood there and we waited a few minutes and kicked the light back on and the buck was gone. I'm assuming he just came down, got a drink and turned around and came back up in here. But it was huge. I don't, I don't know, know if it was the same buck that were in here chasing or not because I didn't get a great look at him but it was a big one on the walk up the hill I mean I found some big tracks right down here at the base of the hill took a trail leading up in here onto this little flat ridge we got some red oaks out here in front of us and I found like two or three rubs right here in this thick brush combined with the scouting that we did yesterday up on top of the main ridge here with all those big rubs leading down and in here these bucks got to be in here on these acorns a good bit and that buck that we just saw down by the lake is not far from us right now. He's maybe 200 yards. It's just now six, so I mean, they can move a long ways in an hour. We're gonna slide up in this tree. We got good wind cover. Try to get set up well before shooting light. Sitting on the end of this little ridge. You can hear the water down there. We're not very far from it. There's this thick little bottom right here behind us. That's where I think these bucks are bedding. They're using this ridge anyway. We got some green briar right up here behind the stand. As it gets a little bit lighter, you'll be able to see it. That stuff looks pretty thick down in that little bottom right there, though. Looks like a real good spot for a big one to light. There's not a ton of sign in here, but there's consistent buck sign throughout these woods. 
And these things are bedding in very specific spots in here. It's probably a spot we're not gonna see a lot of deer, I would assume. But if there's a buck in there embedded, good chance he's gonna get up and move around at some point this morning, you would think. Especially with it being this cold. Should be a good day for hunting. That same one from yesterday or not, Coach? What? I don't know if that's it's the same one. Sure. It's got it. There he is. I see him. What? I see him. He's coming out to the right of those two trees. It's amazing, he can't hear that. He can't hear it though. We've got a freaking grunting symphony up here. There's only 60 yards away and he can't hear it. Where is he now? Same spot. Same spot. He's just feeding down there, whipping his nose in the air. I think he's behind a tree. He is, 
because I had to I had to swing clear around the tree to see. starting to pick up it stayed pretty consistent where we're at up here on this ridge but I know where he's at in that bottom it's doing this and he's got that nose working the whole time he just popped back up again and he came by at like 55 yards across the base of it right there last place I saw him was right down there he was headed for the water but I've been watching that sandbar for the last 20 minutes and I haven't seen him pop out Gucci and I are gonna try to ease out of here since we got all this wind cover climb down, pull everything down with this buck right there at 60 yards. I don't think it'll be an issue as long as we go real slow. I just hope that he doesn't decide to walk up here while we're doing it. And then we're gonna swoop around the water over there and try to slide up into that bedding area with him. But as soon as the wind starts to get funky, I'm gonna back out of there and come up with a different idea or plan.
he's coming up the hill, but he's got to get our wind. Unless we circle, I guess. right over the hill from us. Right now. Right there. Do you want to go right in that dead hole? Yes. What? Yep. I saw that buck up in the tree. He started coming up the hill as me and Gooch were trying to get out. We got so much noise cover that <coughs> we were able to get out with him at like 50 yards. And now he's coming around this hill. He's just feeding up here. That's why I stopped right here is because he was moving pretty quick last time I saw him. <laughs> Otherwise, my cough's gonna ruin his whole thing. Let's get up to that dead ball.
Listen, listen, listen. I hit to the right of where I was aiming at, but he was quartering to me a little bit, so that might have actually been a good thing. see him. Crazy that was the craziest thing that's ever happened. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Huh? I hit him forward, but he was quartering to me, and when he turned his head, I could see the V in his shoulder. So I put it right there. I mean, it's like 15 yards. I put it right on that V and I hit just to the right of it. That was insane. That was insane. I mean, it hit him perfect height wise. It hit him just dead center. I got to watch it back. The arrow did not pass through, which worries me. That's the only way you can go. I mean, there's water right there. He's not down the bottom. He tore out of there hard. Yeah, we better watch it. Oh, I'm shook up bad. I shook up really bad right now. When it hit him, it smashed him in that arrow buried in there. When he was running off, it wasn't flopping around or anything like that. It was buried in there. Just settle down, Gooch. We're both like this. This has been the craziest morning ever. Seen one deer all morning, and it's that thing. That's the same one we jumped yesterday. Bumped him out of the bed 200 yards from here. Walked down a little bit deeper scouting. Found this next little dip right here with a bunch of rubs coming out of it. We're like, he's got to be hiding in this thing. Gooch and I watched him for an hour. Finally decided when the wind picked up that we were going to try to climb down and then sneak around there. As we're doing that, the thing pops up walking straight for the tip of this ridge. I just sent my bow down as quick as I could. Deer's at 50 yards. <laughs> There's like 50 yards. I sent my bow down real quick. I shot down the tree and we basically just ran around here and the deer is walking right at us. We're gonna have to give him some time. We're gonna have to be real patient. Let's go back to the spot where I shot him. The only reason why I took off running after I hit him was to try to see where he went. The buck was actually closer than I thought. I thought he was like 15, 20 yards. I think he was like 10. Mm -hmm. I found my arrow right there, or what's left of it. it. Snapped off right there. Here's one of my arrows. So there's about, what is that, a foot in him? I just don't know. I don't know if that's enough to do it or not. This shot is farther forward, but the deer was quartering too slightly. And like you said, Gooch, the arrow kicks like towards the vitals. Yeah, we got to go look at it on the computer. We're not going to mess with this for a while. Let's go in here and look at this video. See what Greg thinks. Careful. I think it hits that limb right there. Let's. It does hit that limb. That's exactly what happened. That's why I hit right of where I was aiming. Head right for the center of the V and it hits, it smokes that limb and turns. See it? Cut it in half. Mm -hmm. Plenty of vitals right there. Mm -hmm. Look how high he jumps. So, I don't know. So I didn't see it fall, I assume. No, no. he just runs. That, that's like a 50, literally like a 50 to 75 yard, yard, a 50 to 75 foot bluff, and it's just like straight down. 
So he ran over the bluff. Yeah, he yeah. ran over the bluff. That's what we're doing now. We're trying to get over to, to see, see him. him running down the beach, mm -hmm. basically. We never saw. We never saw him. Yeah. Like, I think he had to have turned and went right back in the bedding area that he was in all morning, and we didn't go around in there or anything. We got back yeah. out. We didn't leave any tracks on the blood trail or nothing yeah. either. Ready? They're driving a real fast car. All right, we went back, watched the shot at Greg's. Uh, we've shown it to a bunch of our friends, including our buddy Shane, who's a, do who's a dog tracker. He thinks there's a chance it's a single lung hit. So we went ahead and we called a dog to come out before we even picked up the trail. I'm hoping that single lung is the worst case scenario and that it got right in there and we either double lung the deer, got through the scapula, or we hit some of those arteries that come off above the heart. But in the event of a single lung hit, a lot of times it's good if you can push the deer if they're still alive because they will eventually collapse and either offer you another shot or it will just kill them, the stress of, of pushing them. So figured the best way to do that is with a tracking dog. So we called a tracking dog. Um, Alinda came down with her dog and she's behind us right now. Ted is back there somewhere and Greg is also coming out. So we're gonna go in there and pick up the trail and hopefully we can walk right in there and find a dead buck. That'd be great. Should we bring the cart? Where's that bad juju? <laughs> I don't know. Go walk back and get it. Gladly. I know that's superstitious, but Jake hates superstition too. He'd be like, "Why don't you just bring the cart?" <laughs> but how old is she? She turned six yesterday. Okay. Rod har? Yeah. Cool. Have some good pheasant hunts behind rod hars. Oh, they're great for that. Okay. Let's go find this thing, huh? Yeah. Okay. I sent videos to Troy, I sent videos to Shane, I sent videos to all the other guys. I think the most experienced people are guys like Troy and, and the experienced dog trackers. Because they're the ones that have seen these hits and been on more tracks than most people. And Alinda and Shane both said that it's, it's a possible single lung hit. If that's the case, it will probably be a good thing that we have a dog to push the deer, correct? Push the deer as long as we don't push him off the property. Right. If we push him off where we can get to him, then that's a problem. He's got a ways to go on public. We're gonna try, I don't know what. And if it hit an artery or something in there, then we'll be in business, I don't. We won't know until we... We won't know until we get there. Here's where the arrow was laying. Okay. It was right here in the buck was right out in that opening right there. Okay. And he tore off and went straight through, I think right through there. Let the dog do its work. The dogs do a lot better when there's no human scent on the track, so that's why me and Gooch got out of here immediately. She's just resting. Want you guys to mark blood or any other sign if you see it. Okay. We're probably going to be moving too fast got you. for me to see anything. Okay. I know that's right where he went, or close to it, because the arrow was laying right here.
Justin Yolmar. Oh Yolmeyer. my gosh, dude, dude he didn't go anywhere. anywhere. Dude, he didn't go anywhere. <laughs> oh my gosh, dude, good job. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. I thought he fell over his head. He didn't go anywhere. <laughs> Was that about the easiest track ever? <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Thank you for finding that, girl. Good girl. Come here. I knew as soon as she took off up there, I'm like, that's the direction that he went. I'm in I'm like in total shock right now. Oh, that Actually, shoulder right is popped me. right yeah, there, broken. right in the joint. You can feel it. He literally went maybe 50. He maybe made it 50 yards. <laughs> maybe awesome. made it 50 yards, dude. Like, Holy cow! Bump and dump, dude. <laughs> yeah, That's incredible. we spooked job, this boys. deer yesterday out of his bed up there. Oh yeah. Yeah, and when we saw him, he wasn't spooked real bad, so we we're like, we're gonna come back in on him today, and oh my gosh. I guess I'll go get the card. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, what a hunt, Gooch. That's awesome. What a hunt, man. We're looking at that shot and it's like, it's a hero or zero kind of oh, yeah. deal. Because it definitely, when it shoots back like that, that was a good sign. That when everybody was looking at it, it's like, man, that arrow kicks back into the cavity. That could be great. Holy cow. <laughs> oh my gosh. If I would have just walked another 15 oh, yards yeah. this morning, I would have yeah. saw him laying here. Me and Gooch came to the top of that hill and glassed back here. Yeah, she immediately took off though. Oh. It's like, she must have smelled him, you think? I smelled her. The breeze is great. Yeah, it's got it's a long nose. That always helps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean. Holy cow. I can't believe we spooked this thing yesterday and killed him today. I'm not so mad at him for passing that other deer now. <laughs> <laughs> I've been wanting to kill one of these old suckers in October for like... You've had so many close calls. So many close Finally calls. Finally put it together. The last couple of years on mature bucks at this time of the, of the year. Seems like I can get on them better this time of the year, but I just haven't had an opportunity come together. And I got lucky on that shot. Very lucky. I definitely hit a branch and that arrow redirected a little bit, otherwise I would hit him right there. Well, I'm guessing that, that broadhead and that setup saved you. Yeah, I'm assuming the plan B. That's a hole and you can feel his joint. I mean, it's broken. When you pick his leg up right there, it hit right in that joint. <laughs> look, look, look. We've totally done this and she's like, I'm over it. I already found the deer, what more do I need to go? My job is done. <laughs> this is exciting. You guys totally could have found it without us, but that was fun. Thanks for inviting me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming. Well, thank you. Thank you very well much. Well done. <laughs> We'll say though, man, I mean, especially when you're on the ground, you gotta make sure there's nothing in between you and the deer when you shoot. If it wouldn't hit that branch, I would've hit exactly where I was aiming. If that branch was six feet closer, you might be talking about a neck shot right. or something. Yeah. Say that's one thing I learned from just the stress of today and not knowing that we're gonna get him or not is that stupid branch in that last few feet. Doesn't matter what setup you're shooting. I mean, we are shooting heavy arrows and cut on contact heads now and they hit stuff and deflect just like the other ones do. If we wouldn't have got down right there and moved around him, we would have been toast because our wind was coming straight down this ridge from the stand where we were at, and he was circling along the bottom side just feeding, but he was definitely going to smell us. I mean, I was dropping milkweed in front of him as he was walking up this hill, mm -hmm. yeah. and he was going to hit our wind for sure. <laughs> It's just funny like how smart they are. He's sitting, he's laid down that bottom where he can smell everything. And then he's gonna come up here 
with the northwest wind that's blowing right down this ridge and you can smell everything that's in front of him on the ridge. Like literally nothing, if we didn't get down, there's nothing that could have been in front of him that he couldn't smell. Yeah, and totally comfortable. Yeah, and there's absolutely, absolutely I mean obviously it's just way. a giant water. Look at the hole that he's in. Yeah. It's just a handful of willow trees. It's the base of a couple of ridges and there's oaks. This is the only deer we've seen in here in two days in this woodlot. I mean, it's probably three quarters of a mile, mile to where the car was parked, and it's nothing but hardwoods all the way there with like little patches of like green briar what's up here, and then little patches of higher stem count trees where mm -hmm. some more sunlight got down, and that's kind of where he was bedded at yesterday right. when we bumped him. But just goes to show you, man, these mature bucks, they have so much confidence in these areas where they live. We bumped him yesterday and he ran off 40, 50 yards, didn't really know what the heck even happened because it was high winds. And it was 80 degrees yesterday. Yeah. But we were like, we gotta at least walk around today and scout because it's, all this wind cover enables us to cover yeah. all this ground. Right. We didn't hunt him in the same bed this morning, but after we spooked him, we came down this ridge and found these rubs leading into this little hole. It's like, well, let's throw a sit at it and see if him or another buck will come in here this morning. I think a lot of times what mature bucks do is they, and this is just a guess um, uh, based on some of our experiences, but I think a lot of times they get into their bedding area before daylight and they bed down. But then a few hours later, when the day winds start to pick up, I think a lot of times they'll get up and they'll browse around within that bedding area. Mm -hmm. We've had a lot of luck mid-morning. Well, I think we've, we've seen and killed more mature bucks mid-morning during all times of the year than we have at first light for whatever reason. And it was high winds, which is why we decided to hunt this morning. Yeah. If it was dead calm, no way we would have been able to get away with as crunchy as these things, as these leaves are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this morning was a killing morning, for sure. Dead, yeah, nice to see you. <laughs> Got him. Checked in. Okay. See if he's gotten any faster after last year. I haven't gotten any faster. I'm just so paranoid about Nick and Guts all the time. That you need me to do it? I got rubber gloves. You want them? I'm good. I'm going to go the dirty route. That arrow's in there somewhere. Man, that arrow is in there, dude. You oh, feel there it? it is. You got it? I feel it. I can feel the arrow up in his chest cavity, and it's, it's lodged right here in the off shoulder. And it's fr in front of the heart, but dead center. Must have got the piping in front of it, maybe even the front of both lungs. Mm -hmm. I've got in a lot of them, but I never do a good job of it. Greg's just rolling this whole time. Eight minutes and 50 seconds. Yeah, add a minute or so, because we started late. 10 minutes, 10 minutes. isn't bad. That's pretty good. Not bad. Not bad. Well, what Not you bad. guys are talking about. By the way I felt it, it was it was the arrow was basically sitting right in front of the heart. Feel that thing, Ted? Sharp? Nope. It, this side is dull from fat. The other side, razor sharp. You can see that tip is totally intact and still pretty sharp. So that's, I mean, I'm real impressed with that. Yeah, that's crazy. That hit the hardest bone in the front of that deer, and that's what Troy said when I texted him. He's like. Where that humerus connects to the, it is the humerus, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Where that humerus connects to the scapula is the heaviest bone in the deer other than the deer's jawbone and its pelvis. That's what you want to see right there. There's no insert failure and there's no broadhead failure. That thing is fully intact. And Was it stuck in there pretty hard, Gooch? Stuck in there hard, yeah. Going I mean, you don't want to hit a deer there on no. purpose, no. ever. But, but that's plan B working right there. Yeah, it's nuts that thing is intact. And there and that edge is like is Yeah, you could reuse that head. Like the edge is still sharp, the broadhead's not bent, the tip is not bent, the tip isn't dulled. Thing. The whole arrow is around six hundred and forty grains. Well, which Troy it's thought the heavy bone threshold for a compound was around six fifty. So I'm real impressed with that. Obviously ideally it would have been passed through, but right. from what it hit, I mean that shoulder I'm I'm gonna take the deer back to the house and we're going to skin him in the morning and look at that shoulder and see what kind of bone it hit. Yeah. That's the thing too with a heavier broadhead. Um, 
just forget about weight for a minute as far as the total arrow weight. A heavier overall broadhead is going to be stronger because there's just more steel right there than a lighter broadhead will. And we saw that with Jake's. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I mean, even if it's great steel, right. if it's a small broadhead and it's thinner steel, it's going to be more apt to bending and stuff like that. That's, that's at least what I've been told, and I have not had any proof of it whatsoever until now. No. But, that's what Jake was saying, rather put the weight in the broadhead instead of an insert. Yes, mm -hmm. and that's what Ashby says and Ranch says too, but I mean, you're hunting whitetails, so a lot of people say this stuff is overkill, but in this particular instance, it might have killed us this deer, whereas otherwise we wouldn't have got yeah, it. I would say so. Another thing to consider too is how much we shoot in the summer mm -hmm. uh, as far as like tuning goes to make sure these things, make sure we have perfect flight with our broadheads. And then what we learned this summer versus previous years, Greg already knew this because Greg was sharp at his heads last year, but the rest of us didn't really pay much attention into um, learning about sharpening mm -hmm. until recently. And Troy and Ron at Stay Sharp helped us tremendously, helped me tremendously with these heads. When I was using that buffing compound on the back of a cereal box on that cardboard, that took these things to the next level. Yeah. And it held the edge through that deer, which is just amazing. It's crazy. One, two. Uh, uh, maybe over there. Found my lucky hat out here. Or is it yours, Ted? Oh, so weird. It looks like something Jake would wear, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Probably Jake's lucky hat. Oh, yeah. Lucky hat. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sand all down your shirt. Yeah. Yep. You better rip you that go. thing on the way back. What do you say? Toss him up? Smurf and give him another one a ride. I usually throw them on the trunk and then pull them over, but I don't want to break the back. I uh, gotta be careful to break that back glass. Hang on, Gooch. Yeah, you gotta be careful on that ridge right there. If you put too much pressure on it, it'll break that back glass. I do not want to have to mess with that. <laughs> Ready? Head first, head first. Nice and easy. If you hear anything? Easy does it. There you go. About as long as a Smurf. Is he good and centered up there? Here, we, we can take a picture There's now. a thumbnail. Mm -hmm. Take him to town. Give me a thumbs up. Let's uh, go through his amp clock, guy. Yeah. <laughs> he may slide around up there a little bit, but he'll be, he'll be all right. We probably have to stop a time or two to resituate him. We got a truck, we got a boat, but he's gonna ride on the Smurf. I've got pride. The old girl doesn't have many Many road trips left in her, I don't think. 260 deep. 260, and I'm probably not the best caretaker of the vehicle. So.